Welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. In today's tutorial, it's all about the top hat that you see here. This is called the Halloween Top Hat. The pattern for this is in the more information of this video. You can just click a link and go directly there. Now, I didn't want mine in Halloween colors, so I chose colors that were more reflective of me. I'm going to have some tips for you to get this uh, video started today. And this pattern has me so excited, you have no idea. So I'm trying to contain my excitement right in here, right now. But let's get started. I'm going to get you right into this pattern. It's it's going to be a long video today but this is going to be the start and finish of doing the hat formation just like you see. So the first tip for you today is go get the free pattern. It's available in the more information link of this video. There's a link there. You can just click it and go get it. Um, this is a really amazing project to work on but you need to really trust in the pattern as well as you need to follow the steps. This is actually my second hat. The first one I had to frog because I was thinking I was on a line but in actual fact I was all over the place and by the time I was done the hat was like <laughs> was like three times too big. So I was having to make sure that I have to keep count. So go get this pattern. Follow along with me and check off as you go through each step. The other thing that you're going to need, you're going to need a darning needle for sewing things together. You're also going to need a stitch marker but in my case I'm just using a safety clip just like so and that's going to help me measure my rounds as I go around. And then the final tip which is I think is the biggest tip of them all is that when we're using this pattern you'll see how thick this is. This is a stiff hat as you can see. So it's not just one yarn, it's actually two balls I'm going to be using with love today. You can use Super Saver. I recommend that you do not switch the yarn out of these two brands. So you can either use Super Saver or with love but if you try to make the yarn more fancier the chances of the shape of the hat will not come out. So what I'm recommending today is that you have two types of crochet hooks and you'll see that this one here is a saw cut and a lot of people prefer that one and this one here is a molded. Because you're using two strands of yarn going through this is that these saw cut ones, see how the one already fills up the space? The second one tends to fall out all the time. So I'm recommending that you get a molded one because at least the molded one like it still has more room that you can still get a second strand in there. So that's the biggest tip and it will save you a lot of uh, frustration in the process. So let's get started on starting on the top. What we're going to be doing is starting on the top. You will see that the top has a divot. It goes down. That's part of the pattern and then it will eventually fall over the top and then come back down. So let's get started right now. To get started we're going to be using two strands of yarn together just like you see. We're just going to put them together. Pretend that they're one. You should know that you need at least 90% of a full ball of yarn to pull this off. So if you got stash, stash yarn and you got odds and balls lying around you need at least 90% of a full ball left before you can actually finish this hat. So just be very aware of this. This is an adult size. I do not know what the calculations are to make this in child size. So just that you're aware of that as well. So let's uh, begin and uh, we're going to create a slip knot. And there are slower tutorials available for learning how to crochet on redheart.com as well as the crochetcrowd.com. And this is your slip knot. So here we go. It says with two strands held together, which is this, and A means the color as you see. It says with the larger hook, and that's five and a half millimeter or a size I hook. That's what we have. It says chain four and then join with a slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring. So this never counts as one. So we got one, two, three, and four. Like so and we want to go to the very beginning like this. The very beginning chain. Grab the yarn and pull it through and this will be the really tight ring that's in the inside just like so. So let's begin round number one. Round number one it says work eight single crochets into the ring. So we have the ring. We want to put eight single crochets in the inside. So we're just going to immediately stick the hook through the center of the ring. These are the two stragglers. Just leave those out, out on top and those will get buried in. So we just want a total of eight. So one, two, three, and this is four. And these stragglers I'm going to let just hang out now. So that was four. So this is five, six, seven, and eight. And now this is where I want you to get your stitch marker out. On the eighth one right there we want to put in a stitch marker so that we know that that is the final stitch of the revolution. So every time I say you got to replace your um, stitch you just put it. So you see that it's on the hook. So we go to run right under it. Okay so not the loop that's on the hook but the one right underneath it and we put that in. So that begin that finishes off round number one. 
Round number two now is work two single crochets into each stitch and then it gives you a combination of 16 single crochets. So we immediately just go to the very first stitch and make sure that you are grabbing both of the strings that you have because you are using two sets of yarn here and we just want to single crochet twice into each stitch going around. Okay, so that was one and two. The next stitch, one and two like so. So you just wanna keep going all the way around back to the stitch marker right here and I'll meet you back up there in just a second where we'll carry on. Now as promised, here is the very last stitch that we have and we simply just wanna remove the stitch marker out. So I'm just gonna open it up. So this is how you would do it every time and then so that'd be the last stitch and so we're working with two single crochets in each stitch and that's the last one. So after you've finished the very last one which is the second one, we put the stitch marker right back in so that we know if you have kept your count for the entire project, your, your final stitches will always work out and be balanced at this point. So just always move that crochet stitch marker up. So let's move along to round number three. In round number three, what we're gonna be doing is single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next and you wanna carry that same combination all the way around. So the first stitch is one single crochet and then the next stitch is two single crochets. One and two. Okay, so the next one is one single crochet. And the next one will be two. So carry on that same thing. So one single crochet in the first, two single crochets in the next. Carry that all the way to the stitch marker and we'll meet back there in just a second and carry on. We're coming all the way back around. Your next tip here is right on this, this last one right here. So we've been doing one single crochet, two single crochets, one single crochet, two single crochet. If your math is done right, the, the final stitches will be one single crochet and the one in the stitch marker will always be the double always, always, always. That's if your stitch counts are right. Okay, so there will be two single crochets in here. So you're gonna be noticing that we're gonna carry along on this whole project where we're doing single crochets in a row and then putting two in once in a while and you will notice that the very final one will always be the double if your stitches are maintaining their counts properly. So let's uh, move along to round number four. Round number four we have single crochet in the next two stitches and then two single crochets into the next. So this is moving up one. So we're gonna do the first two single crochets. So the first two stitches are single crochets and the next one is where there's gonna be two. Okay, so just, so you want, so what I do in my own brain is that I go one, two, okay. So that was two single crochets in a row and then I say, and then I put in my double. So I don't really honestly count the double when I'm counting it in my brain so I'm ready to start that configuration again. So I go one, two and then the next one I know has to be a double. So I put two single crochets. Carry that uh, same pattern all the way around. Meet back up at the stitch marker. We'll carry along to round number five. So we're coming all the way back around and the final will again be one and then the next one would be two and then again on the final. You should know that off camera actually I made a mistake and I was about to film and I realized that I had one stitch left over. So I realized that because I wasn't ending up with two at the very end stitch marker that I had miscounted at some point. So it's a great opportunity for you to have a kind of a milestone to know what to look for in order to keep your stitch counts proper. Um, it will change your um, sizing if you don't uh, keep your counts properly. So let's move along and we're gonna go on to round number five. Round number five is easy. It's three single crochets in a row and then two singles into the next. So again, just like we did. So in my brain, I'm gonna go one single crochet and then I'm gonna go to the next one for two and then the next one for three and then the, so then the next one is my double. So I just automatically put my two in there. So I just count one, two and three and then put in my double. So let's begin that one more time. So I go one, two, and three. So the next one is my double. So I put two single crochets into there. So continue that around to the stitch marker. We'll be back up in just a second. So we're just coming up to round number five, finishing it off and the last one will be two singles in there. 
just like that. And let's put our stitch marker back up and let's move on to round number six next. Now round number six is when it starts to do, if you've seen the top of the hat in the photos that you'll see that it will dip down and this is what is causing this. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're still gonna be growing out the hat but every few lines we're actually gonna make it so this just single crochets around which causes the dip on the top of the hat. So it makes it actually shape just right. So in round number six we're just gonna simply just go all the way around back to the stitch marker for just single crochet. So one single crochet into every stitch going all the way around and that'll complete round number six. So let's meet back up in a second and we'll carry on to round number seven. Okay and just finishing up round number six, just removing up the stitch marker, putting in my final stitch and stitch marker back in. So that was round number six. Let's move along to round number seven. And in round number seven it says single crochet into the fourth and two four stitches, two single crochets into the next. So this is just like we have been doing all along. So the first four, so we're gonna have one and the next stitch is gonna be one. This is three and four and then the next one will be two uh, single crochets together. So this is a, like a four to one ratio. So how do I count it in my brain is that I go one and then I go two, three and then four and now the next one will be the double. So continue that same configuration all the way around to the stitch marker. We'll meet back up in a second and finish off round number seven. So just finishing off round number seven, just removing up the stitch marker. Final stitch has two singles in it as per the configuration. Let's put our stitch marker back in. Hopefully your counts are staying right as well. <laughs> Don't put the stitch marker around the crochet hook because that won't help you. And let's move along and we are going to round number eight and you will notice that the, see how it's starting to dip in? That's exactly what you're looking for. So if your hat is still flat you know something's completely wrong and it could go the other way depending on the way you're holding it but it should dip down. So what we have is round number eight single crochet into each stitch. So this is like round number six and again this is helping to create that dipping. So each stitch all the way around is one single crochet. So continue to do that all the way around to the stitch marker. Make sure you do grab two strings in, in your stitches because it will be noticeable and one single crochet all the way around to the stitch marker and meet back up and finish off round number eight. Okay let's finish off round number eight. We're just gonna take out the stitch marker. Last one, one single crochet because that's what it was. Put the stitch marker back in. Blah, and it's just an easy way to keep count. So that's number eight. Let's move along to round number nine. Round number nine says single crochet five Sing, uh, stitches in a row and then double in the next. So let's begin. So we're gonna go five this time. So one, two, three, four, and five and now the next one will be two single crochets. So continue that same process. I think you're getting it at this point. So one, two, three, four, five, double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, double crochet all the way around back to the stitch marker. Okay, just finishing up round number nine, taking out the stitch marker. The last one is two singles in there. Put the stitch marker back in. And my counts are still continuing to be perfect by the way. So I'm really happy about that. Okay, so let's move along to round number 10. Round number 10 we have um, single crochet into the next six stitches and then double in the next. So again just like we've done before. So this time it's six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so then this next one is a double. So continue to do that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then double and carry that around all the way back to the stitch marker. Okay, I'm finishing up round number 10, taking out the stitch marker. The last one will have two uh, single crochets in it. And then I replace the stitch marker back in and that completes round number 10. So we're whipping along pretty good on this thing. Off camera it's not taking me a lot of time at all. So don't let the camera times in between the filming <laughs> uh, confuse you to think that this is a longer project than it is. So what we have now is round number 11. It says to single crochet into each stitch around. So we begin again. So we're just gonna single crochet into every stitch all the way around back to the stitch marker. So let's move back up in a second where we'll have that complete. So I'm just finishing up round number 11 and it's one single crochet into each. So I'm gonna single crochet the final one and put the stitch marker back in. And we're gonna begin round number 12. 
Okay. So round number 12 is just really quite simple. It's, we've already kind of doing it already before. So this time what we wanna do is uh, seven single crochets in a row and then a double. So we just begin again. So we're just gonna count to seven. So one, two, I'm gonna have to flip it the other way. That's two, three, four, five, six, and seven, just like so. So the next one then will be a double, like that. So let's do that again. So we're gonna continue that all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a double, and then that, uh, that keep doing that, and that'll take you back to the stitch marker again. So carry on, and we'll meet back up in just a second. So coming all the way back around, the final one will have two single crochets inside. I've already taken out the stitch marker in this case, and we just wanna carry on. So that was round number 12. Put the stitch marker back in. So round numbers 13 through 16 now are all gonna be the same. This is what's gonna create the bowl shape going up over the top. So if you look at the top of the hat, just like see, so you have the bowl shape that will come around the top and then back around. This is what is this step is going to be at this particular point. So let's carry on. So what we're gonna be doing right away is that we're gonna start off now with a, sick, with a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So every time you get back to the stitch marker, you wanna count that as a round. So single crochet and you wanna do lines number 13, 14, 15, and 16. So you wanna do four rounds in order to do this. So just continue to single crochet now for four rounds, count it every time you pass the stitch marker and be sure to move that up in order to keep your counts proper. I've now completed round number 16 and you should be caught up at this point if you're carry on. And now it looks like a big bowl for uh, fruit. So what I need you to do now is you're thinking to yourself, God, that doesn't look right. What you wanna do is you wanna turn it upside down at this point and you just wanna push down the center like so. So there is the very top of your hat. So that's how this hat works is that the, the middle depresses just like this. And so this is round number 16. So when we're going to crochet it now, you'll see that it looks like that. So because we're using two yarns like so, um, it is a very easy, it makes it stiff. And this, you can see that it's gone over the top of the hat and now we're about to go down. So this is the widest part of the top of the hat and now we start to decrease as we go along. So let's move along and we're now uh, completed round number 16. So we did four uh, continuous rounds uh, off camera and now let's move along to round number 17 next. In round number 17, we now start to do a single together decrease. Okay, so it sing, uh, says SC2 uh, together, T-O-G. So what we're gonna be doing now in this one here is that it says single crochet in the next seven stitches and then single two together. So what we're doing now is we're starting to create the, so it's gonna get narrower as we go along. So let's uh, begin uh, this round. So we're gonna do seven. So seven single crochets in a row. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so now this is the next two uh, single crochets are gonna go together. So we're just gonna slip in our hook, pull the yarn through, leave it on the hook, go into the very next one. So you have three and you pull through all three. So that's a two together, um, single crochet two together. So carry along. So just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the next two will be together just like I just showed you. So carry on for round number 17. Doing that way, we'll be back up at the stitch marker once more. So we're just finishing up round number 17, and what we have here is I wanna show you a tip. So the final two stitches will be the two together. Okay, so if you ended up uh, with just at the stitch marker and you still have to do your two together, you're gonna go the stitch marker and beyond. So you wanna make sure that the stitch before and then the stitch marker here is the final stitch. So you just wanna put those together. Just like so, I'm gonna remove that out. And that helps you, uh, again, keep your balance if you can see what you're doing. So when every time you're doing two together on these particular rounds, the final two should be left out empty in order for you to do so. So let's move along. We're gonna go to round number 18 and 19. Those are simply just single crochet, just like you've done in row numbers 13 to 16. So carry on, and we're simply just gonna start off single crochet and go twice around for rounds number 18 and 19, and be sure to count it when you pass the particular stitch marker just like so. 
So we're back again and I finished rows number, or rounds number 18 and 19. So there's where we are again at the stitch marker. So let's begin round number 20 and round number 20 we're gonna do another decrease just like we've already done before. So let's uh, begin again. So it says single crochet in the six stitches and then two together. So again let's carry on. So we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like you see. And so the next two will belong together. So we're gonna do a together stitch, single together, like so, and bring it together. So can it carry on that same pattern? So one, two, three, four, five, six, two together, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two together. Carry on and we'll finish off round number 20 together. This will be the very last time you're ever decreasing in this hat. And you can see that it's starting to pull the bull shape on the top of the top hat too. So it's pretty exciting at this point. So it's really starting to take shape as of this moment. So let's uh, begin uh, to finish off this round. We'll meet back up in just a second. So we come all the way back around again just like before the final two stitches should be your two together as if you're following the pattern properly. So no big deal. So I do have the final two stitches happens to work out knock on wood. I'm really excited about that too. <laughs> you have no idea. So then I've got to put in my stitch marker one more time. So here we go for the rounds number 21 all the way to 32 it's the same thing. You're gonna notice the hat will continue to come in a little bit smaller so don't be worried about the size being too big at this point. The next uh, many many rows will actually begin to make it more narrow. So essentially what we have at this point if you turn the hats upside down is that this here you can see where we are. So we're gonna be going all these whole rounds now all the way to the top here to, to, till we get to the band on going from rows number 21 to all the way to 32. So on a piece of paper what I would do if I were you is that I would write down these row numbers 21 all the way through 32 and as you pass each row you just simply just wanna check it off as you go along. So off camera I've been doing that all along with this thing. Been checking off my stitches as I've been going along. So do that rows number 21 to 32 just single crochet all the way around. Be sure to move the stitch marker every time you do so. So let's move back up where we're gonna start the brim on row number, round number 33. And we're back in rounds number 21 to 32 are now complete on the sample that we've been working on for this tutorial. And now as per the instructions we're gonna start round number 33 and we're gonna start the brim. So I wanna tell you a little bit about this brim before we get started. This brim is really unusual because you will notice that when you're gonna do it you're gonna think this is not a brim. And you have to trust the pattern that it's gonna work and trust me it works. It's just you're gonna start second guessing yourself and gonna say this is not working for me. So what I wanna tell you here is that this hat is very unusual. Usually with hats that we normally do when we do a brim you can say okay this round yes is for sure the brim. This hat doesn't work this way. This hat what it does is it gets wider at the bottom and then it naturally wants to fold up to create the perfect brim just like you see here. So it's a very unusual pattern that's why you have to stick with it. And so I guess let's stop talking and let's start working on doing the brim aspect of this hat. So let's begin round number 33. We are doing the brim as we speak. So it says single crochet in the next six stitches and then two single crochet in the next. So at this point we're gonna start making this get wider. So we've been going the same uh, size for the rows 21 to 32 but now it's time to make it bigger. So let's uh, begin the process to do that. So round number 33 so it's six. So the we're gonna put in a single crochet to the first six. So one, two and the angle is a little tough for me just so you're aware of it. So that was three and this is four, five and six and simply at this point the next one is gonna be two single crochets into the same one. So continue to do that all the way around. So go one, two, three, four, five, six and then the next one will have two um, single crochets together and then let's meet back up at the stitch marker once again. Move on to round number 34. So I'm coming all the way back around the stitch marker here again is like we had before the two single togethers will are two together inside sorry the two single crochets will be together in that last stitch. So if your math is working out the where the stitch marker was that's where you'll end up putting your last two single crochets into the same stitch. 
So let's uh, move along. We're gonna go to round number 34 and it's simply this round we're just single crocheting. So we're just gonna single crochet all the way around. No fancy stitch work. Let's meet back up at the stitch marker once again. So just single crochet all the way around. And coming back all the way around we have the final stitch. That's your single crochet because that's what we've been doing on this round. And simply just put your stitch marker back. So we're ready for the next round. Here we go. In it is a round number 35. It says single crochet in the next seven uh, stitches and then two single crochets in the next. So I want to explain something to you. Normally in a brim hat that you would have that the brim would naturally fold back up onto itself. The way that the designer is doing this here is that the brim will fan out. So just like you see how it comes out just like so. So if this was a normal brim hat um, you were following just a regular winter hat this should be actually like folded up right against this edge but the way the designers done it is that it will fan out and it will be perfect. So uh, you have to trust in the pattern to do so. So single crochet in the next seven stitches and then two singles are in the next. So I, again let's start again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so then the next one then will be two into the two single crochets into the same stitch. So that's how you would do that. So continue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then put two into the next. So I'll carry on and that'll be round number um, 35 as we continue. So we're finishing up round number 35. Again moving the stitch marker out and putting in your two single crochets into that one. That's your last stitch again and then putting your stitch marker back in. So we're now ready for the next round and round number 36 is simply just single crocheting all the way around. So simply just start up again and just single crochet into every stitch going all the way around and meet back up in just a second while we'll finish that off and move on to round number 37. So we're finishing up round number 36. Again the stitch marker is out putting it in and this was a single crochet going all the way around. So I bet you're thinking to yourself, Mikey, mine's not looking like a brim. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you need to trust me. It works out. So this is what mine looks like at this point. So you're thinking, oh my God, it doesn't look like a brim. Trust me, trust me, trust me, it does work out. So what we have now is round number 37. It says single crochet in the next eight single crochets in the next eight stitches I should say and then two singles in the next. So again just like we've been doing before so this time it's going to be eight. So we got single crochet that's one, we got two, three and you got four, five, six, seven and eight. And so the next one is two singles into the same one. Okay, so continue to, to do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the next one will be two singles inside that stitch. So carry along that same pattern. Let's meet back again at the stitch marker. Well, we'll carry on to round number uh, 38. So we're back all the way around and the final stitch will be two single crochets into that if your math is being done properly. Just like so. So let's move along and so that was really easy. So we only have a couple more rounds to go and then this uh, base of the hat is done. So what we have here is round number 38. We have a single crochet into each of these stitches. So let's uh, begin to do that. So here we go. So just uh, continue to single crochet all the way back around to the stitch marker and that will conclude number 38. Okay, we're coming all the way back around and we simply just take out the stitch marker again, replace it, it's single crochet. Okay, so let's move along to the next round and this is round number 39. We just have one more round after this and this is considered done. So what we have here says single crochet in the next nine stitches and then two singles in the next. So this is the very last time we're going to be increasing again and you will notice that your hat is starting to ball up in the front just like so. And uh, that's perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. So th remember the answer for this one is nine. So nine singles in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so then the next one will be two 
singles in, a, in the same stitch. So do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the next one will be two in the same. So continue that back to the stitch marker once again. And we've come all the way back around and again the slip, sti slip marker is out, stitch marker. Two singles are going to be in the same hole. So let's, uh, that was round number 39. We just have our last one to go. Really simple one. Just simply a single crochet all the way back to the starting point. Uh, to the stitch marker again. So just uh, begin to single crochet and when we come back I'm going to be there and I'm going to show you how to hide your tail ends in because your hat is done and I bet you're thinking to yourself this does not look like the hat. Trust me you're not done yet. So let's uh, carry on. I'll meet you back up in just a second. Where we'll actually fasten this thing off and shape it. So we've come all the way back around and again your last stitch is the stitch marker and you can now permanently pull that out. You are on your last round here. So we're just going to slip stitch. So we're just going to do our final single crochet. And what I would recommend at this point, they don't say to do this, but I would actually slip stitch twice. And it will, what it does is it just brings it back into balance when you go like that. So let's uh, begin to, um, I want to fasten in off my tails. So I'm just going to uh, cut a string maybe about two feet long, both strings actually. And I'm going to grab my darning needle that I have on the side here. And basically with this string here I want to be able to pull it up. So just pull it up like so. And now let's put these strings on a darning needle. Just like I'm just pinching them together and putting it through like that. So simply what I want to do is that I want to tie this, uh, you know, get it to really be snug in there. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to come up under the stitch underneath just to kind of bring it around. Okay, so what I want to do is that I want to go into the direction I came from and I just want to slip it through. Okay, so it's just hidden. You don't see it coming out anywhere. It's just hidden underneath. And I want to go about maybe, maybe about two inches. Okay, so you see it popping out on the other side and I want to pull that through. My friend Michelle showed me this technique the other day and I was really quite impressed with it. Okay, so simply now that you've gone that way, I want you to go in to another part of it. I know it's kind of maybe tough to see but just go into another part and go back to where you've come from. So this is the ultimate way of hiding your tails. Okay, so we're going to come back the other way. Okay, and just want to pull it out a little bit and just go one more time. So we want to go into a different section than what we came out of and we want to go back. So we want to do a total of that three times. And what that does is it, it really tightens everything in so you'll never see it. Okay. So simply at this point you can just grab your scissors and now cut the string. And this way you will never see where you stopped and started. You can see the little, little bulge. But now let's shape this hat and I'll be right back. So at this point this is what your hat looks like. It kind of looks like a bell shape. You got your top here and it comes down and you're thinking where is the rim? The rim right now is just that we want to fold this up. Like so. And we want to go all the way around just like so. So there is the rim so far and so now we just want to straighten out the rest of it. It's nice and flat and voila. There is your, your hat so far. So you can see the rim is being perfect and at the top you want to make sure you have the perfect indentation. So you just want to kind of push it out. Now this is a really thick yarn so you can really um, play with it to really give it some shape. But now what's missing? We're now missing the band just like you see here. So now it's up to us now to create a band. I've got to pick the colors that I want and you've got to decide you know how far do you want to roll this up. But you can see it naturally has stopped at a certain point. So both hats look the same size and now it's up to me to do the band. My band looks different because literally I went along the edge with the black in order to really highlight it. You can do whatever you want. Embellishment, you can do anything. Feathers, um, seashells, anything you want to do with these hats is pretty cool. So let's uh, begin to do our band next. To start the band all we just need to do is choose a color you want. I've decided to go with candy and this is part of the Red Heart with Love. You can use the Super Saver color that best reflects you. We are using the same size hook. So what we want to do now is just chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So simply going to the second chain on the hook we want to single crochet in. 
and we want a single crochet across this line. So on the original one I did is that I used a smaller hook. I went down to a four and a half and I chose a thinner yarn for my band. So my band on the, on mine is actually a lot thinner. Again that's part of your creativity. You can decide what works for you. I actually went through my yarn stash too and found the perfect silver glitter yarn too for it. So um, you know it's really subjective to you at this point. I would strongly recommend doing a band. It actually does uh, provide a nice finishing look for this hat as well. So you should end up with a total of eight single crochets going across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So simply just turning it, okay. So we just want to chain one and we simply come into the same one that's right underneath. Normally in double crochet we would go one over but we want to go right into the first one and then just single crochet ourselves all the way across. So all I need you to do at this point is just single crochet back and forth, back and forth until you can get the band comfortably around this base area. You don't want the band to be sloppy so you want to make sure the band can be stretched just a little bit in order to really kind of hold its position on top of your hat. So let's continue to do that. I'll meet you back up when the band is done. So continue back and forth single crochet until you get the length that you need. So we're back again and I have my band all the way complete and I've already tried it on my particular hat and now I want to bring it all together. So I'm just finishing up here. Simply just pull up onto the stitch just like so. Grab your darning needle and just uh, put your darning needle on. Like so and what we want to do is we want to sew the two ends together just like so. So here we go and what I want you to do is that I just simply just want you to come across. So this is where we are. Come across to the other side. Like so we just don't want to make sure everything is tangled up. Like so. And we want to make sure that it stays nice and flush. So we want to make sure that there's no weird twists or turns. So a friend showed me this the other day. I was really excited about it. Um, is, is a hidden seam. And what you want to do is that when you want to come in you want to come down and I always go right into the top stitches and that's what creates the seams but she was saying to me that if you go in between just right underneath so into the post sideways like so it makes the the sewing look like it's part of the stitch work. So then on the other side when you go across same thing. You want to come into behind the stitch just right underneath the top and come across. So we want to continue to do that all the way through as we come across. So we come down into the next post that's down. Like so and pull it together. And so then this side, next post and down. So I've never seen to do that before and I think it, it looks a lot better uh, for hiding you know, your seams. So now we're going to put it onto the hat. There was uh, many fans that recommended that I don't sew the uh, the band to the hat. It doesn't say to sew the band to the hat. What I originally did on the original is that I tacked it so that it was tacked on the back right here. Okay so if you see the underneath you can see where I tacked it and uh, and then what I did is I sewed across the entire top there so that even if the hat flexes that you'll never see the entrance point. Um, and again you can see that on the inside just like so. But that's up to you. So a fan was suggesting to me that um, today on Facebook is that you shouldn't actually, you should just scrunch up the top. It's not going to wreck your hat. Put your band over top so that if you feel like you need to change color at some point you can just simply just change the band off to a different band. And now we have to just shape it at this point. So you can tack it if you wish. So I just got to just take my time just start reshaping it back out. No big deal. And there is the band so far. So it's pretty cool. So now it's up to us to accessorize it and when you accessorize it you actually attach it to the band. You can actually go right through to the hat if you wish if you really want to make it secure. You can also these lines here are the single crochet. You can simply just do a single crochet line across the top if you don't like that edging. Very very simple. But now it's up to me to accessorize and I have something up my sleeve that I want to share with you and it's actually not even crocheted. It's just a, something I found in my box of decorations here at home. 
So here is my sleeve of tricks. I found some beads. I found actually, <laughs> this was actually a Halloween tree that I cut some of the tr uh, branches off and then some Christmas ribbon and I wired it all together just like you see. And what I wanna do is that I wanna slip this chunk of wire here in underneath the band like so. And what I wanna do is that I wanna take the wire here that's left out and I wanna stick it right through to the hat. Just like that. And the other side is through. You obviously don't wanna hurt your head with this stuff on the inside. But I wanna wire it nicely and tight to the hat. So coming back up on the inside. Okay, so now I have both wires are all the way through. So I just wanna pull it as tight as I possibly can to the hat. And I wanna twist tie it. And I wanna point this in the up direction and really press it up against the ceiling here. And voila. So now here's what we can just do is that we can just fluff up this area. We can just spread out some of these branches just like so. And voila, you would have a really amazing, the green actually helps make it pop. You know, some Christmas ribbons, if you see anything weird going on, you can always shape things. You can always add a little more if you wish. But voila, there would be your fun little hat to wear. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you've enjoyed this project as much as I have been presenting it to you today. Until next time, we'll see you.